In order to solve a three variable system, we're first going to take this three variable system and turn it into a two variable system. To do that, we need to first take two equations and linearly combine them to eliminate one variable. Notice it doesn't say which variable to eliminate. We can eliminate any variable we choose. Step two. In step one, we've used two equations. We're going to linearly combine another two equations to eliminate the same variable. In step one, it didn't matter which variable we eliminated. In step two, we need to make sure that we eliminate the same variable. If we've done this correctly, we should have a two variable system. So step three is solve that two variable system. Once we have that two variable system solved, solve for all the remaining variables. At this point, we should have all our variables solved for, so our final step is to check our answer. Let's do an example using these five steps. Step one, linearly combine two equations. It doesn't matter which equations I pick, I'm going to pick the first two equations. And I'm going to linearly combine them to eliminate a variable. Again, it doesn't matter which variable I eliminate, I could pick x, y, or z. I'm going to pick x. To do that, I'm going to multiply my first equation by 1 and my second equation by negative 2. That way, when I linearly combine, my x's will have opposite coefficients. Now add. When I add, my x's will be eliminated and I'm left with negative 7y minus 5z equals negative 27. Step 1 is complete. Now I'm going to move on to step 2. I used the first and the second equations. In step 2, I need to pick another two equations. I could pick the first and the third, or the second and the third equations. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to pick the second and the third equations. And at this point, I have to eliminate my x's. I had a choice in step one, but in step two, since I've already eliminated my x's, I have to eliminate my x's again in step two. So I'm going to multiply the first equation by negative 15 and the second equation by 1. When I do that, I should have, I'm sorry, this should be an x right here. I should have my coefficients for my x variable opposites. That way, when I add, my x's will be eliminated, and I'm left with negative 54y minus 32z equals negative 228. So I've completed step one, I've completed step two. Moving on to step three, I should have a two variable system. In this case, I have two equations in two variables, y and z. So I need to solve that two variable system.
Now, I could use substitution, or I could graph, but neither of those choices make this problem very easy. If I wanted to use substitution, there's no good variable to solve for. If I wanted to graph, I would have to come up with a graph that graphed y and z instead of x and y. So I'm going to use linear combination. Linear combination works every single time and I can just force this problem to work with linear combination. Now I can either eliminate my y's or my z's, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to eliminate my y's. So I need to find a common multiple between 7 and 54. To find a common multiple between 7 and 54, I can take 7 and multiply it by 54. So I want my first equation to be negative 378y, and I want my second equation to be positive 378y. So I'm going to multiply my first equation by 54, and I'm going to multiply my second equation by negative 7. That's going to guarantee me opposite y's. So negative 7 times 54 is 378y negative minus 5 times 54, 270z equals 27 times 54, 1,458, and it's going to be a negative 1,458. Multiply the second equation by 7. A negative times a negative is a positive 378y. A negative times a negative is going to be a positive 224z equals a negative times a negative is going to be a positive 228 times 7, 1,596. Now I add negative 270 plus 224 gives me negative 46z negative 1,458 plus 1,596 gives me positive 138. Solve for z. Divide by negative 46, divide by negative 46, z equals negative 3. Once I know how big z is, step 4 is solve for my remaining variables. Well, I know how big z is, I still need to figure out y and x. To figure out those other variables, I want to find an equation that has z and one other variable. So if I look back at step 3, I have two equations that have z and one other variable. I'm going to borrow one of those equations to solve for another variable. So I can plug in my z value and solve for my other variable. In this case, that other variable is going to be y. Sometimes it'll be x, sometimes it'll be z, it just depends on your problem. Divide by negative 7. y is going to equal 6. So I know how big z is, I know how big y is, I need to figure out how big x is. So I need to find an equation that has z in it, and y in it, and x. And to find one of those, I'm going to go all the way back to my original equations. And I'm just going to borrow that first equation. I could pick any of the equations, I'm just going to pick my first one.
and I'm going to plug in my y value and my z value. And then I'm going to solve for x. So I've solved for x and y and z. Step five, check my answer. I should be able to go back to my original equations, my original three, and plug in these values for x, y, and z. So I'm going to check my first equation. Two times my x value plus my y value minus my z value. And yep, I do get negative 5. Check it in my second equation. Negative 2 plus 4 times my y value plus 2 times my z value. Yep, my second equation checks out. And finally, my third equation. Plug my x value in. Plug my y value in. Plug my z value in. And yep, it works out in my third equation. So I've checked my answer. I know that the ordered triple, negative 2, 6, negative 3, is correct. So to solve a three-variable system using linear combination, just like in substitution, we're going to knock down that three-variable system to a two-variable system. But we're going to knock that system down using linear combination. So we're going to eliminate the same variable from two different sets of equations. And then we're going to solve that two variable system to get my two variables. And then I plug back into the original to find my third equation. Then I check my answer to make sure that I have it right.